20. The book of Jude, verse number 20, the Bible says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you, Lord, for everything you blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for Brother Phil. We thank you for the message you laid upon his heart. Lord, we thank you for his faithfulness to study. Lord, we just thank you for his zeal that he has, Lord, and help us, Lord, uh, to just be living our best life, Lord, as he talked about. Lord, there ain't no other way. There's not a better way. And, and Lord, each and every one of us who profess to be saved, we have every right to be enjoying every moment of our life greater than what this world is, Lord. Lord, I ask you to be what, what you've laid upon my heart. Lord, help me convey it here to your people uh, the same way you gave it to me, that each and every one of us can walk out of here closer to you than what we was when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I want to look at by way of introduction is we see he talks about there in verse number 20. You could even go up into verse number 17. He's talking about it as well. He's talking to the beloved. In verse 17, he says, But, beloved, remember ye the words which are spoken before. And we go through that, talking about some of those that will be here in the last time, mockers of the word. And in verse number 20, he says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. As Brother Phil already alluded to, uh, we're fully aware of who we're talking to here tonight. Uh, for the most case, if you're going to be here on a Sunday night, it's going to be part of the beloved. Uh, it's going to be part of those that are saved, those that are here at church. Uh, usually, just about each and every time, the doors are open that you can. And, and so I know when we get down here and get to preaching, I'm fully aware of who we're talking to. Uh, but as Brother Phil said, this is just what God laid in my heart. So we see he's talking to the beloved. But look again there in verse number 20. And he says, Building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Pretty simple. What are you trying to build on? What are you trying to build yourself up on? Too many times, you know, uh, uh, Brother uh, uh, Jordan mentioned it in Sunday school this morning, we'll turn to self-help books, uh, we'll turn to this, we'll turn to all those things in the world instead of turning to the Word of God. Instead of turning to Him to have Him build us up and have Him help us the way He should. Uh, what are you using to build yourself up on? He talks about in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keeping ourselves. If we'll build ourselves up properly, we'll keep ourselves in the love of God and looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ on eternal life. And the last thing by way of introduction is we see there in verse number 22, we see the benevolence or compassion. And if some have compassion, making a difference. Part of the good news prison ministry, that is one of our uh, main verse you would have on anything when it came to the jail ministry. That verse right there, Jude verse 22. And if some have compassion, making a difference. Why? Why do we need to have compassion? Why do we need to make a difference? Well, that's pretty easy just to look out and see the shape that this world is in today. Uh, you look out and you can look in faces. I noticed this morning, uh, being that we come to church and we come, to, I come through the back way, through all the subdivisions up here, and uh, you just drive through this morning, and, and they had left, uh, um, I think it was you, uh, USPS, Postal Service, left a package on our uh, front step yesterday that wasn't ours. Um, so before I came to church this morning, I went over the other side of the street and dropped it off, uh, seen a couple different families out working in their yard. No hope on their face. I seen multiple people as I drove down through that subdivision out walking this morning. And it wasn't, I mean, yeah, it was a little humid out this morning, but it was a whole lot better than it was at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And you'd have thought they was walking at 3 o'clock this afternoon, Brother Mike. Just the look on their face, just no hope. What are we doing to make a difference? What are we doing to make a difference? And that's what I want to preach on with the Lord's help tonight, making a difference. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, I listened to a, a podcast at work on Friday. Uh, I played a little bit of it even for Sister T Miss Tina this morning. And uh, they was talking about, and I don't know anything about, I don't watch, I'm like it, most other people, I don't watch the news a whole lot, uh, usually never. Uh, but they was talking about this uh, Glenn Beck, Brother Charlie, I guess, on Fox News. And I guess the other night he was on um, uh, Tucker Carlson's show. And he was talking to him, and Glenn Beck, this fellow, Brother Ray, I'm sure he's probably worth millions and millions of dollars, got everything going for him, and he's in Afghanistan trying to get Christians out of the country. Putting himself in some sort of danger. Now, now we can sit and say, oh, well, he's not really going into the Taliban if we want to, Brother Jim. He's not sitting on his couch like I was all weekend. 
putting himself in harm's way to get some of these Christian people out of Afghanistan, away from the Taliban, Taliban, however you want to say it, where they're going to face persecution, he's making a difference. What are we doing to make a difference? God laid four things on my heart of how we can make a difference. Number one, we could be giving. Now, I know what we're going to say, Brother Josh, don't start preaching on money or anything like that or giving. Well, that's going to be the first thing. Are we giving of our tokens or money? And I'm not talking about coming in here and making sure you put things in the offering plate each and every time. When was the last time we just went and just uh, 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 gave somebody a little something just, just because? You know, I wasn't sure somebody told me they was going to come, but I am, am lucky enough and blessed enough tonight. Uh, me and Brother Phil, actually both of us tonight. Yeah, I walked back there and shook hands, and he said, this is Kathy, my sister. I said, amen, both of us got our sisters to come tonight. If nobody else got anybody to come, we both got our sisters tonight. But that means that my little niece, uh, uh, Maddie, is here. And Maddie's like, what, you're talking to me? I ain't paying any attention. Here, tell your mommy to go buy you something. Don't, not right now. You don't have to go tell her right now. She's going to leave. See, that worked out perfect. All I did was hand her $5. She was excited. She was going to go tell her mom right now, Mom, let's go to Walmart. Let's go get something. When was the last time you ever just done something simple for somebody? What if you just met somebody in the church this morning and just said, Hey, come here, I want to take you out for lunch today. I just want to take you out and buy you a burger. How many times did the pastor talk about as he talked about Brother Frank Stinson? Just giving somebody a piece of candy. Just calling up, asking somebody to take him out for a burger. He jokes all the time. I believe that's his Brother Clint's first time he ever had a Whopper. Brother Frank Stinson took him. When was the last time we were willing just to give of our, or do anything out of the ordinary with our money for somebody else? Trying to make a difference in their life. But see, too many times we get too attached to that money. We got to remember, we're not taking it with us. We get too attached. Not only giving of our tokens or our money, when was the last time we gave of our time? When was the last time we were willing to just sit and listen? When was the last time we walk up, and I, and I know, uh, you know we have those people that you don't like to hear about every single little, little issue they have, but when was the last time you could just tell somebody was broken, somebody was going through something, and you took the time just to send them a text or give them a phone call and just say, hey, you need somebody just listen? I'm here. Whatever you need. When was the last time you just reached out to somebody? Just willing to give that time. Hey, look, I, I have some free time today, and, and I'm just going to go, and I'm going to go over, and, and I know so-and-so has been struggling. They've been really going through it, and I'm just going to reach out and see. Just, you know, maybe I'll take them, buy them a hamburger, and just sit and talk to them for a while. Making a difference in their life. Not only that, when was the last time we made a difference just giving of our talent? I appreciate. Can I tell on her? I'm going to tell my sister for a minute. She pulled in. She said she left her house too early. She wasn't sure about how to get here and everything. And just for all of you all that hated it, she's the same way. She just did. Uh, uh, Gavin told me they got dizzy out there in the roundabout just doing circles. No, he didn't say that. But he, they did do circles. But she got here and she said, church does start at 6, right? I was like, yeah, she goes, there's a lot of people here already. Like, I know. Ain't that a blessing? It's a blessing Sunday night to see so many out here practicing and just, just want to be able to do anything to give back to God. That's why when I came in, I said, I heard Sister Brittany and Miss Chloe up here practicing singing. I wanted to hear them sing. When was the last time we just gave our talent? We well, might be that talent. To, maybe we have a little extra money. Maybe we have a little extra time. Maybe we just have the talent just to be able to sit and, and give good advice or just be able to sit and listen. When was the last time we did that for somebody else to make a difference in their life? Not only do we need to be more giving, the second thing, we need to be more grateful. How grateful are we for the bounty? Now, I was sitting over thinking, and I don't remember who I was talking to this week. I was talking about this. I believe it was somebody at work, and, and my, uh, uh, well, she had no idea she came tonight. She's going to get picked on so much. My sister, see, when she was born, we had already moved into the double wide, you know, that we had a ceiling fan, and you had air conditioning and all those kind of things. And, and I know people had it way worse than I did, Brother Ray. I, I understand that completely. But when I grew up, we had a 12 by 60 trailer. And when it got hot like it was this past week, you'd put a sheet up in the living room before it went down the hallway to keep all the cold air in the living room. That's where you'd stay, you know? I remember taking a shower before I went to church in the wintertime on Sunday on, uh, during school weeks and laying down in front of the wood stove to dry my hair. You know, I had, I had long hair long as Brother James back then. It was crazy. You can see my wedding pictures and see that. Never did I dream I would have what I have today. Living in a house that's big enough, we could have two or three more people, more clothes than I know what to do with. 
We got so many clothes. Uh, Miss Bell even told uh, Teeny the other day that she needed to quit buying her clothes. She had too many. Now, most of you other ladies never would say that, would you? There's no chance you're going to say you have too many. But she said she had too many. How grateful are we for the bounty that we have? We go out into a lost and dying world and have a world that watches us, and instead of being thankful for everything we have, we walk around pooch mouth all the time. Not only grateful for our bounty, but just grateful for the blessings that we have every single day. The fact that we got to wake up this morning, the fact that we have the air we get to breathe, the fact that we get to come into God's house today that we too often take for granted. How grateful are we in that? How grateful do we let the world know? I talked about how, how many times will we go and, and we'll go out into the workplace on a Monday after we've had great, wonderful church services, and instead of talking about how wonderful church was or how grateful we are for everything God's done for us, we'll complain about what went wrong over the weekend. Well, I was going to do this over the weekend, then my car broke down. I spent all weekend working on that. Instead of going in just telling them, let me tell you what God did yesterday. Let me tell you how God met with us yesterday. Not only grateful for our bounty, our blessings that we have every day, how grateful are we for this book? Brother Little's talked on it about this morning. People all across this world would love to have this book. Most of us have multiple copies laying at home. We couldn't even begin to count them to tell you how many we have. I'll never forget the time that's been told here about uh, a missionary, I believe it was, going somewhere over to some other country and walking in. That guy sat there just weeping, crying, and asking him what was wrong with him. Tonight was his night. He got to read the page that they had of the Bible. And we don't give it a second thought. We get busy tomorrow or Tuesday or whatever day this week and don't get to have our daily reading or whatever. It's just, ah, we'll, we'll make it up for it tomorrow. Maybe we'll read two chapters tomorrow instead. Don't give it a second thought. How grateful are we for that book? Not only do we need to be more giving, not only can we be more grateful to make a difference, what if we were just good? What if we were just good? You know, we, I mean, yes, you could tie all those things in. The giving and the grateful. But what if we were just good to people in our own family? You know, it's, it's amazing. You see just how family can backstab each other, how family can just go at each other, and, and just those kinds of things that you hear about going on in this world. You know, it doesn't matter how close or not close you are or something like that. What if we were just good to the people in our family? What if we were just good to people that we see every day? Those people on the job, those people that we come across... Uh, uh, you know, maybe in our neighborhood, just being nice to them. No matter how much we may disagree with them, no matter how much uh, far out there in the left they may be, what if we were just good to them? Just showed them a little bit of kindness. And this one that I know that uh, uh, we're, we're really not going to like, but God put it on my heart and I put it in here. What if we were good to the people who don't deserve it that are in our life? What if we were good to those people that aren't good to us, Brother Josh? Does the Bible not tell us to love one another? There is no buts in there. There is no exceptions in there. Be good to this person and accept those that are mean to you. Accept those that don't treat you good, then you have every right to just treat them bad. That's not what the Bible says. But too many times we have people that we look at that we just think, oh, they're not reachable, or, or they don't deserve God, or they don't deserve this, or they don't deserve that, and I'm not going to share the gospel with them, or I'm not going to share this with them, or I'm not going to tell them anything about God because they're just mean and hateful all the time. What's that got to do with anything? Let me say this lastly. Brother Phil, I went faster than you, buddy. <laughs> this is the one where you might not like. If we're going to make a difference. We want to truly go out in this world and make a difference. As I said in Jude, you can go back and you can look there in verse number 17 and 18, and it talks about how they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. We know we could read through and talk about in the end days perilous times shall come. We are fully aware of the times that we're living in. What are we doing to make a difference? What are we doing out there and even in here to make a difference? We say that we want to see those people that are out there, we want to see them uh, get saved. We say that we want to see them go to heaven. We shouldn't want them to go to hell. You know, I did the video uh, that I talked about posting some stuff on social media. The video I did and put out yesterday was talking about, if you're lost, hell don't want you there. You can go to the rich man that died and go to hell, and he, he begged Abraham, said, let somebody go. I have five brethren that I don't want them to come here. 
The devil wants you there, but the people in hell don't want you there this morning. Do we want them there? Do we want them there? I don't like Joe lives next door to me. I, I'd prefer him not to have a mansion in heaven next to mine. We might not say that out loud. That's crude. That's rude. That's just mean. We wouldn't say that out loud, but we live that way sometimes. If we're not willing to be in good to that person, if we're not willing to do those things, then the last thing, if we're not willing to live godly, how much are we making a difference in their lives? How godly are we in our attitude? How godly are we when we face trials? When the world looks at us and the world sees us and we go through something bad, uh, whether we lose a job, whether maybe we lose a loved one, maybe there's some kind of sickness, something comes our way, what is our attitude towards that trial? Because a lost and dying world is watching to see how we react. If you fall apart, the world's going to see it. Not only if you fall apart, if, you, if you're in here and you're an adult, you fall apart, your kids are going to see it. Boy, mom and dad take me to church every single week, and now this came in their life, and they're ready to quit on God. How important is God going to be to them? What is your attitude out in this world? What, what, what kind of attitude do we have? You know, I, I, and, and I am guilty of this, and, and you know what? I, I, I've thought about this ever since God started laying this message on my heart and talking about our attitude. And I, I honestly, I, I've argued and wrestled with God. Like, come on, God, what difference does it make? Really, what difference does it make, Brother James, if I'm out here and I'm on my way home tonight and I pull up to the stop sign, I'm getting ready to turn, and here somebody comes barreling through the stop sign, Brother Phil, what difference does it make if I just lay on my horn and I'm screaming and yelling at him, you idiots? Ask Bella, that's exactly how I am, because she'll reach over and she'll pat me. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. She will. You can ask her. She will. What kind of attitude is that, though, really? What kind of attitude is that towards other people? Because you don't know that that person that you just blew their horn at don't get a good look at you and don't walk back into church next Sunday because we just hung a track on their door out in that subdivision last weekend. And they're like, ain't you the guy that just horn cussed me last week? How do we know it won't? It's easy to get mad while we're driving, Miss Marcy. I do. It aggravates me to death. I took Bella up, to, uh, um, up for an eye appointment the other day and had to drive through Cincinnati. I could not do that every day. If you drive up there every day, God bless you. I could not handle that every day. That is crazy, some of the people that you deal with. And all I had to do was just try to drive back home. It's nuts. And we think, oh, that don't make a difference, really? You don't think others aren't watching you? You don't think our kids aren't watching you when they're in their car? Miss Tina would tell you, she drove with Bella and then had Bella blurp out idiot or something like that all of a sudden because it's something I said. You don't think it don't have an effect on others? We're having an effect on them. What kind of effect are we having? How godly are we in our attitude? How godly are we in our actions? What kind of actions do we put that forth in front of this world? I've talked about our neighbors and our kids and all those kinds of things. They see what we do on a daily basis, whether we like it or not. I remember Charles Barkley. Uh, I believe it was years and years ago playing basketball talked about that he did not need to be a role model for our kids. And he's exactly right. You need to have somebody better than sports stars to be role models for our kids. What kind of actions are we putting forth for them to be able to look at us to be that role model? What are our actions when it comes down to it? Because they are watching. The world is watching. Our neighbors are watching. When you get up and you profess to be a Christian and you get up and you don't go to church on Sundays or you don't go to church on Wednesdays, your neighbors notice. Now you can say it's right or wrong or they don't need to worry about that. You can say all you want. But as I believe it was, Brother Bob, I remember, I think it was the first time I ever heard say it, you may be the only Bible somebody ever sees. What kind of actions do you put forth? How godly do we truly live out in this world? What kind of godly representation do we give to a lost and dying world out there? There is, a, there is a world out there that, you know, the more and more podcasts I listen to and the more things that I listen to and the more things you see in this world, there are people who want to take this book and they want to twist it and they want to turn it and they want to make it say what they want to say to be able to, leave, to live how they want to live. Pretty much what they want to do, Brother Donald, is they want to live like the world and then profess that they're saved and they're going to heaven. Well, maybe they have trusted Christ. I don't know. Maybe they have truly asked Christ to save them. Maybe he does live in their heart. But I would have to think if he lived in their heart, they would have to be, you know, the Bible talks about being a new creature. 
They would have to be a little bit different, I would think. Those actions is what shows that. When they see us be different than the world, when they don't see us going out and doing the same things that the world does, when they see us uh, act uh, just differently when things come our way, they can see it on our face in the way we act. I talk, you know, Brother Phil talked about he's living the time of his life. I could probably ask how many of us in here are living the time of our life. And I would be willing to ask that if I asked that question, everybody in here would raise their hand. Amen. Praise God, Brother Josh. It's wonderful. Living a Christian life is wonderful. Now, what if I went to all those that are around you? I picked 10 people that you're around mostly when you're outside of those doors and said, do they seem like they live their best life? What kind of representation do we have of God out there? How godly do we live? When it comes down to it, how godly do we truly live? Can those around us, those in our family, our co-workers, our friends, any of the acquaintances, anything that we have, can they look at our life and know he's different, she's different? We have multiple people in here, when we used to do prayer requests on Wednesday night, we talk about, you know, so-and-so on my job, that they ask us to pray because they know we're a praying church. Does everybody on your job know the same thing? Does everybody in your family know the same thing? Do they know the importance of prayer? Do they know those things just by looking at your life? Making a difference. We are without excuse. We have the word of truth. We're without excuse to look and know how close we are becoming down to the end. We are to love each and every one inside and outside of these doors. If we want to see them go to heaven, we want to see their lives change, it's up to us to make a difference. The world's not going to. It's not going to happen. But too many times, I believe here's what we're guilty of. I can't do anything. I'm just one person. I can't do it. I told you I wrestled for a while about putting out little videos or something like that. It's like, what, what difference is it? I'm just, I, I have 10 friends that are going to watch the first two, and then they're going to get bored with it, Miss Mary. Nobody's there. They're going to like it and then scroll on through and never watch it. Why should I do that? Because all it takes is just one. We've heard it said many times. If each and every one of us just brought one visitor next week, think of all the cherries we'd have to put out. Did we invite everybody this past week? Anybody this past week? Did we try to make a difference in their life? living a godly life before them, inviting them to church, let God do the rest. It's not dependent upon me having to be perfect. It's dependent upon me to do what God would have me to do and let him take care of the rest. But too many times we're not willing to do our part because we try to look at ourselves as too insignificant. In the grand scheme of things, yes, we are insignificant, but we can play a big role in somebody's lives. There's somebody out there we can touch. There's somebody out there we can make a difference in their life but not living like the world. We've got to live godly, live by this book, and do what God would have us to do, and we have no idea what kind of difference we can make. Miss Renee, I'm done. You come get a song of invitation. Brother Ray, you come get a song of invitation. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you for uh, Brother Phil, the message he gave us, Lord. Uh, Lord, just help us to live that life outside of here, Lord. If we would be willing to live that life outside of here, Lord, the difference we can make in this world. Lord, that we can look at this world, as I talked about, it's just so dark, have no idea what's going to happen from day to day. Lord, these people are just lost. They're just the concern and the helplessness on their face, Lord. It's up to us, Lord, if we want to make a difference in their lives. Lord, so help each and every one of us be with this invitation. Uh, Lord, just ask you to speak to hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.